meeting wholly if electronically and effectuate both the emergency procedures authorized by FOIA and the emergency ordinance, the Young Adults Advisory Council, further notice the council, needs to make certain findings and determinations for the record. It is a bit cumbersome, so I uh, ask that you ask you in advance for your patience. First, because each member of the council is participating in this meeting from a separate location, we must verify that a quorum of members is participating, that each member's voice is clear, audible, and that and, and, and at an appropriate volume for all other members to hear. Accordingly, I am going to conduct a roll call and ask each council member participating in this meeting to state your name and your location. Um, from which you are participating, I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear one another. Following the roll call, uh, we will vote to establish that every member can hear each other. Um, so let's go ahead. Uh, Denver Supinger calling in from Oakton. Natalia Denise Moody. Hi, Natalia Moody calling in from Falls Church, Virginia. Thank you. Sarah Bufano, it will not be with us. Kiana Simpkins will not be with us. Casey Judge will not be with us. Judith Kupla. Hey, Sujit Coppola calling in from Vienna, Virginia. Wonderful. Um, Anna McCoy, you noted she will not be here, correct? So then we have Jessica Sun. Hey, Jessica Sun calling in from Vienna, Virginia. Thank you. And then Dini Muhammad. Dini Muhammad calling in from Annandale, Virginia. Thank you. And then we have Eddie Sandolbla. And please pronounce, uh, correct me if I did not pronounce No, that. no, it's fine. It's Eddie Sandova. Perfect. And where are you calling in from? I'm the representative team of the Young Adults Council from Surrey District. Wonderful. Thanks for calling in, Eddie. All right. At this point, I will pass the virtual gavel to my council member, Shoot with Kupala, so I can maybe heard to make a recollection motion. Um, so passing. I move that each member voice can be adequately heard by each other member of the council. Is there a second? All those in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> aye. All right. Thanks, y'all. Um, Second, having established that each member of voice can be heard by every other member, we must next establish the nature of the emergency that compels these emergency procedures, the fact that we are meeting electronically, what type of electronic communication is being used, and how we have arranged for public access to this meeting. Therefore, I move the state emergency caused by COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for the council to physically assemble and unsafe for the public to physically attend such meetings, and as such, um, FOIA's unusual uh, usual procedures, which require physical assembly of the council and the physical presence of the public, cannot be implemented safely and, and practically. I further move the council may conduct this meeting electronically through dedicated video and audio conferencing line, and that the public may access the meeting by registering through the meeting link at, on the Young Adults Advisory Council website, which is fairfaxcounty.gov backslash economic initiatives backslash adults dash advisory dash advisory dash council dash YAA or by calling 1-844-621-3956 and entering access code uh, 2334-445-5620. It is, it is so moved. Is there a second? All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, and whoever seconded, can you just put your name in the chat so we have it for the record? Because I didn't verbally hear anyone say second. Um, uh, finally, um, thank you, Jessica. It is uh, next required that all matters addressed on today's agenda must address the emergency itself um, are necessary to continue to continue for the continuation of Fairfax County government and are statutorily required or necessary to continue operations um, and the discharge of the council's lawful purposes and duties responsible is so moved. All right, so um, I believe the agenda was sent out. Are there any um, edits or modifications um, to the agenda? Hearing none, we will continue as planned. Um, and I don't see any people, um, folks of the public, nor did we receive public comment 
or questions in advance. So we'll just go ahead with our agenda. Um, I'm really excited about the presentation, but we do have a new member. Um, so I want to properly allow Eddie um, to introduce himself um, and for you all to introduce yourself to Eddie. So um, um, Eddie is our new representative from the Sully District. Actually, I'm, Eddie, I'm not really sure where in the Sully District you live. So if you can divulge that as well and say hello, please, we'd love to virtually meet you. Thank you. You must be, thank you, Denver. And Good evening. My name is Eddie Sandoval, and I'm a member. I'm probably honored to be a, my first time ever being at the Young Adult Council for the first time. And I'm here to represent my Surrey district as a constituent to discuss these issues and learning about the how can we move forward on making communities our priorities, make it more happier and successful on the issues on we must advocate and how to make this move moving forward. And I'm thrilled to join up this Young Adults Council by Kathy Smith. And I and let me tell you my story. I'm I'm Eddie and I'm from Chantilly, Virginia. I'm part of the Soviet district where I live in the Chantilly area. Thanks Eddie and um for everyone's context, Eddie is really into public transportation. Um, so he will be on our transportation and infrastructure subcommittee. Um, and he also has, you know, already his first meeting has a point of the agenda to talk about the Fairfax County connector. So Eddie, we're excited to have you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm looking for me if you guys as soon as possible. Yes, absolutely. All right, so I know something that we've been talking about as a full council and in our subcommittees is how to ensure that we are. That the county is using its resources properly to, to engage with the community, put the onerous not on the individual member, but on the county to um, be more inclusive, open and transparent space. And that's exactly what uh, Lloyd Tucker um, and his uh, team has been, have been working on. They presented a plan to the board. A week or two ago, um, and they're going to present that. He's going to present that to us this evening and answer any questions we have, and hopefully um, can shape our individual subcommittee operations um, around outreach and engagement and how we can use these techniques. So, um, Lloyd, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Uh, I appreciate um, the invite and um, looking forward to our discussion tonight. Um, I have a, a few slides, maybe. Uh, 10 or 11 to, to go over about the uh, inclusive engagement <clears throat> framework that, that we came up with. Um, a lot of this work was was as a re was a result of our uh, um, one Fairfax policy, um, if you're familiar with that, and um, also a lot of the feedback and uh, and direction that we got from. Uh, community members um, when we did about a year and a half of, uh, of engagement for the countywide strategic plan. So um, I'll share my screen and hopefully this will work out. Let's see. Can you all see that? Sure can. Okay, and now let me see if slideshow will work. Here we go. All right, can you see my slideshow view? Sorry to ask so many questions. Yeah, we, we see it just right. All good. All right, thank you. Um, <clears throat> so, as I as I mentioned before, um, we really want to. Um, the county has has been. Uh, uh, embarking on uh, a lot of community engagement um, activity throughout throughout the county um, for years. Uh, but but that's not to say that, that we've been doing it right, not at all. Um, we, uh, the county has a, a history in some cases of, um, of doing great things uh, by engaging the community, um, but um, we, we've also made some missteps, um, in particular with some of our marginalized and um, uh, low socioeconomic uh, uh, communities, communities of color, uh, immigrant communities. And um, <clears throat> it, it was apparent, uh, number one, like I mentioned before, um, through the 
um, one Fairfax policy as well as um, uh, as well as the the countywide strategic plan engagement process that, that we had a lot of gaps in uh, in the work that we're doing. Um, but we we still want to ensure that that we're instilling um, the importance of uh, community engagement throughout the the county and that everyone has an opportunity to participate. Um, another thing that kind of highlighted uh, what we have been um, dealing with or going through is um, is the uh, excuse me is um, is COVID excuse me the uh, the pandemic and that has highlighted a lot of uh, issues uh, concerns and raised uh, a lot of pri or created a lot of priorities for how we need to uh, intentionally um, consider uh, certain aspects that, that have to be um, a part of our intentional um, inclusive community engagement. <clears throat> Excuse me. It, it, Lloyd, just so you know, it switched over to um, presenter view, so we're seeing the, the slide oh, with the, the notes okay. and everything. Uh, so let's see here. I present a view. I'm I'm trying to figure out how can I show present a view screen. Uh, okay, well I'll, I'll I'll do my best without the uh, without my notes, but it, it's fine. Um, uh, there there are a lot of uh, key reasons. Uh, like I mentioned before, the uh, the strategic plan uh, engagement work that we did, the uh, one Fairfax policy. Um, as well as as the unfortunate pandemic that we're we're still going through, um, and the the waves of that uh, pandemic and, and phases of of precaution that we've had to take. Um, so of course, uh, we we want to look at uh, what has uh, what has been the historical, um, or excuse me, uh, provide a historically uh, or historical overview of uh, of the voices and and ensure that they have a seat at the table, not just voices but also uh, values. Um, we also need to to enhance our engagement efforts uh, to ensure that that we have uh, better outcomes for all. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we also need to make sure that the government is accessible and that we are providing resources um, through a new approach, uh, new resources, new innovative ways to engage our uh, populations with disabilities. Uh, folks who may not speak English, um, folks who may not read uh, their native uh, languages, um, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as uh, we want to make sure that we're we're providing an opportunity uh, that we can so that we can build um, uh, long term relationships and that the onus of ownership in decision making is uh, placed and stays with the community. And that there is a collective power um, uh, distribution and, and way of, of uh, human approach to, to how we're doing community engagement. So, as I mentioned before, um, the drivers of this uh, framework are definitely, as you can see at the top, the one Fairfax uh, policy, the strategic plan down at the bottom, and um, also, uh, what, what I left out as well was, um, and some of you all may be familiar with it, is the um, chairman, uh, Chairman McKay's um, uh, task force on equity and opportunity. That was a, a, um, another driver that helped us to really focus and understand that community engagement is a way to empower, or excuse me, not to empower, but to create opportunities so the community members, residents uh, can take advantage of them to be empowered to uh, to make decisions, contribute to decisions with the proper information, with the proper communication and understanding uh, about decisions that impact them in their communities the most. So once again, uh, uh, you know, with community engagement, we're, we're trying to, as the definition says, uh, we're trying to create a discourse or a conversation and dialogue uh, so that we can ensure that everyone's interests and ideals and values and voices are heard and considered. And, uh, you know, one of the things that one of the largest things that I, I learned is that it's, it's one thing to do outreach. Um, but if you aren't uh, practicing engagement, 
at all levels of outreach and public participation, then you aren't being inclusive and engagement as I'll, I'll talk about in a later slide um, includes everything from building awareness, collaborating, and also to, um, to delegating decision making um, and keeping it with, with the community and with, um, with constituents in, in each district. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So the benefits of, of a consistent approach to engagement are definitely to, to make sure that we have a fair process, um, regardless of who in the county is, is facilitating. Um, we, and just to, to share with you, we did a, a root cause analysis, uh, based on, um, our experiences, um, based on, like I said, the, uh, the strategic plan engagement process based on what we, uh, what we've learned and are trying to implement with one Fairfax policy um, and practices. And uh, also just, just based on what we have our experience through COVID. And one of the biggest things that we learned is that we're all doing things different in the county with how we engage the community. Um, we also understood and have identified that a benefit to this approach is that we have to have collaboration amongst each other. We, we're siloed and we, we realize that. So. How do we identify those areas that we have these barriers to sharing information to sharing resources, uh, community resource management um, amongst ourselves as as community agencies? And how can we uh, ensure that we are duplicating services, information processes, and that, that we have more coordination? And then uh, lastly, we. We determined that uh, that we wanted to make sure that there is in order to, to remove these barriers in order to, to maintain fairness um, consistently, we, we need to have a centralized countywide approach to ensure that uh, that that we have a body um, of folks who are um, ensuring that the, the intentional considerations and principles are being uh, implemented are being carried out and practiced through every community engagement uh, and countywide engagement initiative um, and program uh, that we that we're uh, partaking in and planning with the community. Um, so, like I said, we, we did a root cause analysis um, to really get down to, to what we were doing wrong. You know, what are some great things that we're doing, which which we we have a lot of resources in Fairfax County, um, you know, and we're. So we, we, we've been um, able to accommodate, uh, but not to the extent that we should. And uh, some of the things that, that we determined, um, and I, I won't necessarily go into these verbatim, but is that we, um, we need to make sure or that we, we have to consider um, that we're, we're, we're understanding uh, the history and the, the cultures um, in, in the communities and that we have to also understand that, that our culture was not one that, that set us up for success or the community and it, and it didn't uh, benefit them. Um, another is that our, uh, um, our agencies have to, to uh, share in our, our responsibilities and our, our resources. That's another challenge. Um, another is that uh, Sometimes, like I started out, we have uh, communities in which uh, communities that have been marginalized, that have been ignored, um, that haven't been or offered a seat at the table. They have, there's been no attempt to, to engage them. So we have to ensure that we are understanding and acknowledging that there has been a, a distrust and sometimes fear, as you can see, in the communities um, that, that doesn't make the county the best partner to, uh, to engage with. Um, so we have to understand that, that that's due to the historical and structural and institutional racism that we have perpetuated um, uh, in some cases. Uh, and, and, you know, as unintentional as it may be, we, we have a lot of, uh, of reconciliation and repairing of relationships to do. Um, with the fourth, we, we have to have uh, standardized training. Um, it's so important. We, we, we cannot continue to. Um, to invest separately in bringing in different vendors uh, to do uh, trainings about the flavor of the month. But how can we ensure that we, we are researching, exploring, and then contracting vendors to bring in uh, and provide us with uh, knowledge and skills to provide the best practices uh, for the communities that we serve? 
Um, we also have to create a better uh, transparent data culture. And then finally, we, we have to ensure that we uh, have a, a clear vision and consistent process in order for this to come to fruition. Um, during our, our, uh, our root cause analysis, as we, we reflected on some of the missteps that we've made, also some of the successes, um, and, and as we did our research over the last year with, with our steering group, uh, we, we realized that in order for us to be successful, we have to have three facets to this framework. The first is the core principles that you're, you're looking at now. Uh, the second is um, a, uh, an engagement uh, spectrum that I'll share on the next slide. And then the, the third is the third facet to this uh, inclusive engagement framework is uh, uh, key considerations that we have to consistently um, operationalize, implement, use, and use to the best of our abilities and, and use best practices for those, um, for those considerations. Um, but going, getting back to these core principles, uh, we have to prioritize equity. Um, you know, it's one thing to have a policy. It's, it's one thing to, uh, to, to talk about what we wanna do but we have to ensure that each agency has um, an engagement plan or goals that are embedded in their agency's uh, equity plans uh, that we each have. Um, as I said, we have to reconcile and repair relationships. We have to come uh, humbly and approach communities humbly and, and try to ingratiate ourselves um, uh, only with the understanding that that will occur uh, if we acknowledge some of the missteps that we've had, some of the distrust that we've created, and some of the trauma um, uh, that we've created. The county has been a chosen trauma for a lot of, of minorities um, and, and marginalized communities. So we, we have to acknowledge that in order to, to move forward with the community. Um, as I mentioned on a previous slide, we have to have uh, data that drives our decisions, and we have to be able to share data across um, across divisions, across departments, and and um, our uh, projects. Um, once again, creating clear expectations. Um, as you'll see on the next slide, when I talk about the uh, the engagement uh, spectrum, um, you'll see levels of engagement that make a promise or or that share with the community that that uh, we we really want them to be a part of of the levels of, of decision-making, of information sharing and gathering, and of collaboration and partnership. So we have to establish that early in each process. Um, also, uh, enabling uh, engaged communication. Uh, we have to have plain language. We have to have the resources um, and tools to ensure that community members can effectively uh, understand what's going on so that they can be engaged in decision-making um, and in the process. And then uh, finally, our, our, core principle, our last core principle uh, centers around ensuring that the government is accessible. So, you know, um, uh, these processes can't all be at the government center. They all can't be at Heritage Building or at the South County Government Center or Jerry Highland Building now, uh, Lake Ann. Um, you know, we want to ensure that, that these processes and these, these programs um, and discourses are, uh, are providing safe uh, spaces uh, for facilitation, for conversation and engagement out at community centers, houses of worship, um, in apartment complexes, in community rooms, or you know, at uh, HOA locations, wherever communities feel safe and where they feel that, um, that they can access uh, these meetings without a challenge or without barriers uh, based on transportation, uh, the timing of things as well. Um, child care? Uh, do we make them during meal time? Do they want them on Saturday morning, Saturday evening? So we have to accommodate and, and be more accessible. So this slide is is the engagement spectrum that I, I mentioned earlier, and uh, it it shows on the left uh, that we are committed to the levels of engagement uh, to ensure that that the community. Uh, is able to contribute to the uh, decisions that, that impact them the most. Um, if you look at the, the level column, it, it shows that, you know, at our basic level, at the developmental relationship level, 
Uh, we want to share information, um, make sure that, that the community um, understands, and that's our promise. And we, we plan to, to, to articulate that at the beginning of, of whatever process it is that it requires just some information sharing, awareness building, capacity building through knowledge and information. Um, when we want the community uh, 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 to, to contribute, um, there's also a, an expectation that, that we will uh, share concerns and then um, uh, consider what, what's expressed by, by the community. But we want to share that at the beginning of process B, this will be the intent so that it can inform whatever decisions that are needed. Uh, then collaboration. Um, you know, it, it's so important that we partner with the with the community, um, and that we we uh, uh, work together to to come up with solutions. So that's another level of uh, of engagement that that we uh, we've identified. And then um, the decision uh, uh, engagement level, where you know, similar to uh, if you sit on the park authority, or if you're on an advisory council, or a BAC, uh, you know, for lack of of um, of example, um, you know, the, the board or, or certain um, agencies or, or the county um, delegates uh, decision making um, to to the community. So, you know, when 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 appropriate, when it's not a, a political matter or, or, you know, whatever the, the board strategically uh, uh, finds um, or when they find importance or, or um, priority to delegate decisions. Um, you know, through the RHA, um, the housing authority to purchase land on behalf of the county. Uh, like I mentioned, the park authority to purchase land on behalf of the county um, or to build parks. Um, also, you know, the community is 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 so engaged in decision making when it comes to uh, to juries, when it comes to um, elections, when it comes to to other things, naming facilities, or or even when it comes to public participation. As I mentioned. Uh, and making your voice heard to inform the decisions about uh, what type of development, um, you know, zoning, all those types of uh, factors that, that go into um, buildings and, and uh, progress in, in the county. Um, and this is the third facet that I that I shared uh, earlier. So as you can see, certain uh, certain bubbles or circles in this uh, Ferris wheel or, or pinwheel, they're highlighted in red or outlined in red. And um, uh, it's it's important for us to ensure that that we are considering all of these facets or all of these spokes in the wheel. Uh, however, it's it's particularly important to make sure that we we have a focus and that we are intentional about providing resources for language access. Uh, we we do an okay job now with language line and, and getting things translated, but uh, we're really trying to make a push to get. Uh, to ensure that, that meetings that are facilitated with the community in the community are spoken in the language of the primary uh, group that, that speaks a particular language. And if the county, you know, if, if staff don't speak that language, then we'll get uh, simultaneous translation in English for ourselves. But why not have the, the meeting um, uh, uh, discussed in the primary language of the community? We're taking a population. Um, and human and cultural focus to, to this as well. We have to be intentional about that and we have to invest in those resources for that. Uh, ADA accessibility, uh, not just for folks with, with physical uh, and, and mo mo physical disabilities and, and people with uh, mobility uh, issues and challenges, but uh, uh, mental health, uh, visual, uh, as well as uh, hearing impaired and, and other areas that, that we need to strengthen uh, to ensure that, that we don't socially isolate folks. Uh, digital equity, uh, that includes uh, uh, digital literacy, uh, resources and tools such as hardware, um, you know, classes to build capacity and to build um, a, uh, a literacy uh, to, to understand how to utilize the tools and the resources through training and capacity building in the community uh, that the county has to invest in that. Of course, that lends to our virtual resources, um, streaming, uh, you know, uh, increasing the amount of, of, of streaming platforms that we have so that we can have multiple meetings that that are broadcasted at the same time or simultaneously, um, as well as other resources that, that create 
an ability for um, for hybrid meetings where they're doing them virtually and in person, and we have the the, uh, the bandwidth to do that. Uh, we also need to ensure that we're being intentional and in, in investing in our ability to utilize geography or a geographical and um, a place based approach. Um, as well, it, it goes without saying that the literacy and, and plain language uh, using that when we're engaged in the community definitely is a priority, but the ones in red are, are things that we we uh, we need to invest more resources in and uh, make them a priority uh, with with the budget. This slide here just talks about the, uh, you know, who, who's responsible for doing this. Um, of course, um, what's nested in in this is uh, or everything is nested in the, the residents and, and stakeholders, but um, all employees in the county. Are responsible. Uh, our social media professionals, subject matter experts, and folks who, who do our web publishing. Um, we have community developers and regional managers and planners and folks who are responsible for, for also uh, being intentional about our uh, commitment to our principles and ensure that, that those are uh, considered um, intentionally, as well as our leadership, our, our board of supervisors, um, our, our county executive, and his senior management team. So um, our next steps, of course, uh, you know, we're, we're doing presentations like this. We, we presented to the board, like Denver said, uh, a few weeks ago. Um, and, you know, feedback is not uh, just, you know, let, let's present and then we, we get it one time. This, this is an iterative process. Um, this, the framework will be updated as we go. So we will continue to engage and go out to our, our stakeholders and, and our other champions and community members to ensure that we have ongoing input and feedback into how they would like for the, the county to, um, to be more intentional about inclusive engagement. Um, we, we are actually, um, our group is meeting tomorrow to start talking about um, how we measure impact, how we uh, implement this plan. Um, of course, we, we have things that we need to prioritize in the budget uh, and we're starting with, with training, um, which is a, a huge uh, endeavor to, to take on with with um, 15,000 uh, staff, but we want to ensure that everyone has a, a basis of understanding. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a community uh, developer, if you're a staff person in a board or supervisor's office, or um, if you do um, recycle collection, you know, we all need to, we all engage uh, in some form or fashion. And, um, you know, we, we all need to build our capacity and, and develop our skills and, and understand our principles across the whole enterprise of the county. And then um, finally, uh, we want to make sure that we're, we're building an, an engagement culture. Um, so we're, we're piloting this process in uh, specific um, initiatives like the strategic plan uh, a, a year ago, um, the Mount Vernon Athletic Club, uh, that process that, that we're we're embarking on with uh, with Supervisor Lusk's office and, and the community down in uh, Mount Vernon, or excuse me, in the Lee District um, in South County area, um, where, like I said before in the beginning of the presentation, uh, including our goals and strategies in our equity plans. Um, so being intentional about that, and then leveraging um, our GIS and other uh, uh, resources and tools. And just one example that I shared with with uh, Denver and Owen the other day is that we we really are. Um, uh, let's see how do I stop sharing. So we are attempting now to, um, or we are actually moving forward with purchasing an online public input um, or public participation platform that I think is so cool. Um, you know, a lot of jurisdictions and municipalities around the country are are um, are using it. It's called PublicInput.com. Uh, there, there are three or four that we researched and uh, tried to figure out what was best, um, you know, for the county. What are what are our uh, neighboring jurisdictions using? Folks in California, Minneapolis. You know, we're we're trying to really do our due diligence in that. But this will give us the opportunity to to do, excuse me, to do uh, community resource management, uh, to give folks opportunities to comment on any type of community engagement from any department. Uh, when when it's convenient for you, uh, you know, remotely from your your cell phone, from your your laptop, your tablet, computer, whatever it is, and we'll be able to see, okay, this person is in this district or this person is in that district, uh, this zip code. So it'll help us collect data, 
that'll help us uh, do our job a lot better and, and um, uh, help to uh, uh, prepare us for what type of analysis we need for, for certain types of, of engagement. Um, but along with that, we're, we're also trying to beef up um, a map that will, and not just a map, but um, a GIS um, tool that will share with the community, with nonprofits, houses of worship, with county staff, um, where certain groups, um, uh, resources, and tools are located throughout the county, where cultural groups are, uh, ethnic and racial groups, um, folks who speak different languages. If you if you want to engage uh, them, we want to make sure that that folks have that information and that um, you you have the ability to reach out and to partner or collaborate. And we, we plan to keep that updated um, uh, in, an ongo in an ongoing manner. But um, that kind of completes uh, what, what we uh, presented the other day. And um, you know, now if, if you all have questions, I, I'll be more than happy to, to answer any. I'm sorry if I went over time, uh, Owen and, and Denver, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm look, look forward to getting any questions that you all may have. Much, Lloyd. Um, I know I have a bunch of questions, but I will go last. Um, certainly, so I will bounce this over to my fellow council members. Do we have any questions, comments, concerns, insights for uh, Mr. Tucker here? Well, then I will jump on in. Um, <laughs> So I, you noted in your presentation, it's also on the BACs to take on this plan, right? And implement it. It's something we've talked about as the Young Adults Advisory Council is how we can make sure that we're not, you know, supposed trying to be seen as the one and only voice for young people and be more equitable because we recognize we are a certain class of folks, though we have diverse backgrounds, like we have the privilege of being here. So what are you as you're as, as this is developing, how can we as the Young Adults Advisory Council better and better ourselves in the community, survey the community, and make sure that we are um, properly advocating for young adults um, across the county? You know, a, a great way is um, number one is what you're doing now is is meeting, um, staying connected with uh, with uh, different. Um, and, and varying uh, agencies. Also, uh, you know, we, we have a, a needs assessment that comes out. We have position papers for human services that comes out. Um, and I know you all aren't just inter interested in human services. So excuse me for speaking from my, my normal uh, lens, but um, we have a lot of great information that, inform that should be informing the community. And a lot of times we, we miss and, um, you know, in my agency, we, we work with um, folks from birth to, uh, to 99. Um, so, you know, we house ITC, which is infant toddler connection. It works with um, uh, uh, infants and toddlers that, that have developmental delays or disabilities. Uh, we have therapeutic recreation. We have uh, senior centers. We have teen centers. We have community centers. We have um, family resource centers uh, and, and neighborhood centers. Uh, we have fast train transportation. So um, I, I use that as an example to say that um, there are, there's a lot of information that's shared or that comes out of my agency. And I think by having these different agencies or representatives from each to come out to you all periodically and present on topics that are uh, trending, that are issues, challenges that they're facing, um, in particular, the ones that, that deal with uh, young adults and, and um, I guess uh, what we call the opportunity youth from 16 to 24 years old. Um, uh, you know, um, it, it, it may be a benefit to, to engage my agency DFS um, housing. Uh, as well as the CSB, uh, because we, we do population specific work for our, uh, like I said, whether it's, it's babies. Uh, school age kids, teens, adolescents into uh, young adults and, and adulthood, or excuse me, older adults. Um, so it, it would be, uh, I think, really cool to, to ensure that it, uh, those folks make your meeting a priority by coming out and sharing that information. Once you, you get that information, 
you know, uh, I think you all have come up with a plan and you all already have subcommittees, um, but, but figuring out what, what's the priority for you all and um, then partnering with perhaps an agency like NCS, we, we lead the county's uh, community engagement work. Um, uh, you know, uh, we're once again, geographically um, situated intentionally to ensure that we're working with a lot of our historically marginalized communities. Um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have a lot of uh, neighborhood centers, uh, community centers, senior centers, and teen centers. But we also now, since we merged with, uh, with Office for Children, have over 144 elementary schools and uh, centers that, uh, that we offer before and after school care. So we have young parents, young adults who are um, picking up their kids, dropping them off, uh, that, that can be engaged um, uh, in order to uh, build awareness and capacity uh, on some of these hot topics and issues that, that uh, some of our, that our agencies and, and also perhaps nonprofits and other organizations can, can bring. So I'm, I'm not sure if I answered your question, but um, you know, one of the ways is, is definitely connecting with us. We, we house the uh, interfaith liaison, Ramona Carroll. I don't know if she's spoken with you all yet, um, we house the, uh, the countywide uh, capacity builder um, for, uh, for nonprofits, um, and we're, we're responsible for, for uh, integrating a lot of the human services. Like I said, we, we have a ten tendency to become siloed because we're, you know, bureaucracy, and, and sometimes that's the nature, but we're trying to get out of that. And NCS has definitely been charged with doing a lot of that community um, resource management, um, we will, uh, um, uh, you know, also, uh, be, um, leading a lot of that, that centralizing of the, uh, of the community engagement that I talked about of the framework, um, will, will play a large role in that, but, but also, um, talking to the one Fairfax office. I'm not sure if Carla or one of her reps have been out yet, uh, but that's so important. Um, and then the young man who's, I guess this is his first meeting today, you know, he, he um, I think has has some uh, discussions or topics to discuss about transportation, you know, getting a, a rep from Tom's shop in um, F dot out. Um, if it's zoning, you know, talking to talking to our man Owen about uh, what's going on in DPD. Uh, but we've got a lot of stuff going on from affordable housing, land, um, excuse me, um, comprehensive planning, and um, uh, what else? Conservation plans and. Um, uh, how do we preserve uh, mobile home parks, things like that, that are really um, taking off. Um, and with the adoption of, of the great uh, model that the DPD has implemented, ZMOD, you know, it, it's important to help young people understand the, the workings of that, the process, how that works, and how that impacts them. So I would, I would just ask you to uh, get attached to, to some of these agencies and reps, and I'm sure Owen and I think Teresa's on here, you know, they, they can uh, support in, in identifying which, which representatives to call, but I'm always accessible and please definitely call me if you have questions about the paratransit, about transit, um, you know, uh, workforce uh, support for, for undocumented folks. Um, you know, we, we're, we're really trying to ensure we keep a pulse or we have our thumb on the pulse of, of everything um, uh, in the county. Sorry, that was so long. <laughs> don't be, don't be. Thank you so much. Um, once again, I'm full of questions as always. How about uh, council members? Yeah, I can. I'm gonna ask a question, Denver. Hey, Lloyd. This is uh, Dini from Annandale. We're calling you from Annandale, Virginia. Um, for the root cause analysis, I was wondering who exactly you guys were polling, or if you had focus groups from certain areas. I know you mentioned how um, you're piloting with like the Mount Vernon area, like South County area. I was wondering who exactly you pulled for that root, root cause analysis. So, once again, so we, so we, we used our steering group. Um, it, it is made up of county employees. Um, the feedback that we got from the strategic planning process that we did a, a year ago or a little over a year. Um, gave us over 255,000 um, uh, hits and, and uh, I guess, feedback uh, data. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but, but um, comments from, from community members that shared, that, that resulted in about 33 strategies in the strategic plan that said, we got to do better at community engagement. So that was kind of our charge right there. And so we, we had to do some 
based on all of that feedback, you know, we looked at, okay, they said, we got to improve on this. We have to do that. We have to do uh, a through Z. Um, and, uh, we, we looked at that. We, uh, we tried to digest it and said, okay, let, let's, let's see what we've been having challenges. at." And we, we did our root cause analysis. It was a broad group of, uh, county, uh, departments that they were represented in it. And, um, you know, we, we uh, were able to, to come up with the fact that, that we haven't done the best job um, and the community is absolutely right. And we need to be a little more um, or not a little, but we need to be more approachable. We need to be uh, more accessible and uh, that we need to right some wrongs that we created. So um, if I'm answering your question, we, we used um, a huge uh, steering group uh, made up of, of county staff after we received that feedback from the, uh, from the community that we needed to improve on certain things. And um, we, we now we're coming back and presenting this um, to the community, to our leaders to see if this is, if we got it right. So. Yep, that answers it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We probably got enough room for one more question. Well, I will put it out there as we're considering communications with constituents and making sure they're educated. I know that it's a huge cost to either do mailing, right? I mean, right now we depend on sandwich boards and newspapers, which really aren't a thing anymore, right? Um, and random post, you know, posting on our websites. So, um, as we're considering with notifying folks, especially during the budget process, what investment will be had on electronic communications and social media and other stuff, um, especially talking about young people? Great question. Um, so, we are right now going through a cost analysis with DIT, with, um, I think I mentioned the other day, with, uh, with um, Cable and Consumer Affairs. Uh, and OPA uh, to figure out, hey, what's being used? Where are we getting hits on social media? Where, where, are, where are we cold? Um, and who's actually responding and engaged? Um, we're also looking at, at other factors that, that other um, uh, initiatives throughout the, the, the globe are, are, um, are, are telling, you know, qualitative things that, that are going on and informing their work. And um, so we're, we're trying to do all of that to figure out how much infrastructure do we need to invest in. Um, as I mentioned uh, before, um, DIT gave me a preliminary um, uh, you know, analysis, but um, now that we've completed the framework, they've gone back to the drawing board and they're like, okay, we need to revisit this because they're serious about this. Um, the, uh, uh, I think, as I mentioned the other day, also, uh, with cable and consumer affairs, um, you know, they, they control or manage our streaming, our channel 16, things of that nature. So, um, they're looking at, and they, they only have 1 vehicle that goes out to provide, you know, the signal and all that. Um, so they're, they're looking at what is needed to ensure that we can have a mobile or mobile units, not just 1, but, you know. What's the need for mobile units to go out and provide uh, connectivity? Um, you know, how many I, I, uh, they haven't uh, shared with us uh, yet, you know, how many streaming, um, I guess, do I call them links or, or platforms we need uh, to ensure that we can have more than one meeting um, uh, uh, shown at the same time um, in different languages and in different districts because and that's one of the things that they brought up is hey lloyd this is all great but we also got to consider that different supervisors different uh commissioners different boards authorities and councils have meetings on different nights so how do we also ensure that we we create a schedule of programs of uh of meetings of participation public uh participation that doesn't conflict if we have something on a Spanish line or on a Urdu line or something like that. But those are all being thought through right now. And we're, we're looking at what other jurisdictions are doing also to, to, uh, to handle this issue. But that's, that's a great question. So I, I can't tell you what exactly we'll, we'll be coming up with and the, what we'll be requesting in the budget. But um, as soon as we finish 
the analysis of park authority, libraries, cable and consumer affairs, uh, D, uh, you know, DIT, transportation, everybody will, will have a, uh, hopefully a, a good um, proposal to the board and, the, um, and our CFO and the, and the county executive. Great, thank you, and I'm sure we'll be excited to see that proposal and, uh, you know, weigh in as the adult advisory council. Um, Lloyd, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate you giving us your Thursday night. <laughs> oh, it's, it's my pleasure. It's it's great to uh, to see everybody on. Um, I hope you all have a, a great rest of your meeting, and thank you for having me. Of course, thank you, thank you. Bye -bye. So much, Lloyd. Really appreciate it. Take care. All right, folks, we're going to go to the last item of our, well, the last, you know, formal item outside of announcements, um, part of our agenda, which is Eddie uh, wanted to talk about the updates of Fairfax County Connectors. So, Graham, Eddie, I'm going to pass this over to you um, to take us there. And Eddie, I, for whatever reason, I think you might have the ability to mute and unmute yourself. Could, could you try to unmute just by yourself and see if that works? Uh, yeah, I can mute myself. All right, well, the floor is yours, sir. Um, I think you had, you had in, indicated you wanted to talk about the uh, the Fairfax connector and some potential. Um, oh, yes, uh, is it there you could share the screen? Could you, um, could you send me a link? Because for whatever reason, since you're not a panelist, I can't, I can't upgrade you like I normally am able to. It's, it's a weird thing. Um, this happens sometimes, but if you could drop the link into the chat, I could, I could bring up. Yeah, I will try to do. Hold up. Uh, can you wait for a moment? I apologize for that. Yeah, and, and while we're waiting, I'm going to put a link in the chat just for general counsel knowledge. There is a housing form coming up um, with uh, the Metro Washington Council of Governments about the regional pro approach to housing. So if you can attend, please go ahead. We'd love to hear your thoughts and uh, maybe we can use that as insights and and follow uh, for um, further conversation. Um, and then also, I'm not sure. I would love to hear you guys' opinion on if we want to avoid uh, the redistricting conversation like a plague, or if we want to um, have a conversation um, about it um, and recognizing that the um, redistricting commission for Fairfax County, like the state, was unable to come to a consensus. And the board is being proposed with a bunch of um, different uh, maps, and they will be the ultimate deciders. So, putting that out there, marinate on that. Eddie, I don't want to take time away from you, but um, Graham, if we're ready to go, we can pass back over to Eddie. All right, so Eddie, uh, floor is yours. I've got the um, the link pulled up. Hopefully, you can see it. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm Eddie. So I'm Kerry Jr. I'm sharing the agenda is to talk about the Fairfax Connector bus change and parks in our community and for Fairfax County. And what does this mean? This means that there will be about to be a lot of changes. They're proposing it for the buses, like for example, like if you guys want to take a take a time to tell my folks that community of Fairfax, you have the chance to advocate that fair a take out a survey. If you just click on the survey, there's so you, you can take a look and you can advocate. You can say something if you like this or not. If you look at the bottom screen, the proposal that the county wants to make. Hold up. If I if I click you guys a Route sheets. This is what Fairfax County are proposing this idea on the routes throughout the Centerville, Chantilly, Tyson's modified studies. And here's the first proposal. The Route 306 goes to George Mason University and to the Patagon Metro Station. And this is a local station, goes eastbound, westbound. Transfer to three those routes, no change, and the routes will be the service hours so 8 a.m. 8:50 to 3 p.m. on the weekdays, like that. 
if I can see a screen over here, goes to George Mason, all the way to the Pentagon. What's that? That's the first proposal, no change. Now for a second arc, second second presentation, second side two. Side two contains the route 423, goes to the center of Tyson's, Tyson Colonel Metro Rail Station. And these are the routes that this is a circulator called, called clockwise on the westbound jumper connecting to transfer available on any routes if you can see the screen the connector metro well and improvements are with gain of improvement frequency and at level services are 5 a.m to 9 p.m on the weekdays peak of 10 minutes and 20 minutes and then on a saturday from 7 a.m to 7 p.m on the saturday and then sunday no change just every 20 minutes of that. That's a local 423. And then next slide, slide three. The 427, wow, well, the proposal that the county make, the class called federal, and directions go to eastbound, westbound, back Joe Range Drive to Springfield, Spring Hill Road, and transfer available to those routes. And the level of services they're proposing is weekday to 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. to 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. Big for 20 minutes, off peak for no 20 minutes. And for no service on Saturday, Sundays. And slide number four. The so, Eddie, are you planning to go through all the 24 different maps? Well, do you have any time or we don't have any time? Yeah, I, I'm thinking... Um, as you bring this to the council, do you think there's equity concerns? Like, are you bringing this as a point of concern because you think it doesn't provide proper service? Are you bringing this to us because you think we should support it? Um, what is what is your hope? Um, the reason why I want to bother the council is the reason why I want you guys to take a look at and how would you feel the community when riding the bus and okay, this is a make change or what does this mean benefit that okay, this route is going to affect the community of those districts. I'm making a change for the buses. Like, okay, this will impact. If I'm the rider, this if I'm the rider taking the bus a lot, I says okay, something must have happened. Something must have make a change. If I ride in the bus, for example, if I'm gonna take the bus, like, okay, I'm gonna go to point A to point B, sometime before, and then suddenly, when we see the bus changes that county proposes, we feel like okay. What is this take? What is this gonna take me to make it more easier or harder or make improvements on those routes? Like it's making it's making a harder take. A person who can ride the bus takes so long. It takes so very very long to get there to point A to point B. It just but it's making any sense of how can we improve our buses more service like to improvements without without taking so long. Frequency, and the reason why I brought up this concert is to engage to advocate for those that are selling vessel and going the district on the advocate on the changes and what do you want to see a change to advocate? So Eddie, I think that this is great. Um, I think that the it sounds as though the survey for this is open through next yeah. week. Um, I think it's through next Wednesday, so it sounds like there is still time to kind of weigh in on on this particular initiative. If if you if you want, I, I, I know that we we typically end our, our meetings after about an hour or so. So oh, yeah, to... it's a long time here about that. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Want... I, I think that's this is my fault. I didn't, I didn't quite realize that um, that we had such a had such a, a thing to get through. So I, I'd only build it for 10 minutes. Um, yeah. If you, if you, if you could, um, I think one of the things that might be really helpful is if you could do, you know, an analysis or, or describe which of these, which of these routes are the ones that are, you know, kind of impactful that, you know, where services yeah. are degrading. That's what I thought. I put show every slide for 10 seconds to think about what's this impact for the proposal change. That's why is this good? Like, I'll tell you a slide for every 10 seconds, then we move to show to show to to show to young council what is affected or 
what is this change and what does this mean for the community that have changed? Okay. So okay. If, if you could, if you could do that, that'd be, that'd be tremendous. Cause I think okay. there are, there's a, transit is a, you know, is a big, is a big deal. And I know that there's a lot of interest in transportation on the council. So if you could put that together and kind of describe to us, um, you know, what, what, what is the, you know, the level of change that's being you know, done up as a part of this, I think that'd be a really good thing. And, and uh, perhaps, you know, the council wants yeah. to take a position on it and then and they can well, take, a, take a look at it. But the buses don't need to be improving because we saw people complain it says, okay, this service is not improving. What's going on? What's it, why is it taking too long? Or how can we make an improvement to point A to point B without our residents on the bus to be sad, to be not disappoint them? Or how can we make how can we make make the community better or how can we make it imp impressive for those people who ride the bus to be happy and to be, you say, okay, okay, this is a good thing. For example, say, okay, this is a good service. This is for provide public for so, ideas. Say, hmm, okay, this is a great idea. But it will cost me how much problem is funding. On funding, says, I will spend too much money to increase my buses, or what is affordable that the county, how much they are going to spend on the budget by adding more buses, or what is the budget for funding for tax on the board of yeah, so decision? I, I think we all have our own expertise on this on this panel, and it sounds like this is something you're really into, and we want to like nourish that and recognizing that we still have six day only six days to um, give any feedback. So if you could do like a like a one page summary or a quick email saying, hey, these are the ones that we uh, that I think are a concern. You know, Route 461 completely ignores XYZ community or adds 30 minutes to the commute or, you know, takes away a weekend service, um, whatever, right? So highlight one concern and then send that over to us and we, we can have um, a discussion of how the board can weigh in on that. Yeah. And, and that so, I'm not, I'm not quite finished with this. There's so many more to go. There's so many more. I'm not quite finished. Okay. I know. I apologize for time oh, limits. You're fine. Yeah, whenever you have it, let us know, and Graham can send it out to everyone, um, and we can do our individual uh, weigh-in accordingly. And we and we can also send the um, we can send the survey around now so that everybody has uh, has the opportunity to take a take a look at it before the twenty seventh. Yeah, for those from the Surrey District, Providence District, Bannock District, and well, all districts affected. The Springfield District and the Janesville District. Okay, sounds good. All right, so yeah, if you can do that, send it over, and we'll make sure people put their influ influence in. Um, and as other things come forward, we'll make sure we discuss this in the Transportation and Infrastructure Subcommittee, um, so we can dive deep into it. Um, okay, so I did put the question of redistricting on the floor. Are there any comments on it? If I hear silence, I know I will assume that we do not want to act on redistricting. Going once, going twice. Oh, quick question mm -hmm. about the redistricting, about the fabric scale redistricting. Mm -hmm. So before before we close our meetings, I have to say something. If Fairfax County is going to do we district on who is this district, who will be my new leader, or what is this impact for the community on making a changes from the district or making making differences as a who is on your side, and who's on my Leo, or who's going to be my new, will I be the stay, or will I stay, or who will be a new a new representative when this doing the Fairfax County we district meet. Yeah, I mean, we can definitely be advocates on the back end to educate folks on new. It's just we have no new maps right now. We have proposals. Um, the state is going to the court, um, the courts, the you know House delegates, uh, state senate wrap, uh, um, maps, and then the um, local maps will be considered by the current board of supervisors. So currently, we don't know who's changing, what's changing anywhere, um, but we do have proposed maps. But if there's no major want to act, we don't have to. Okay, um, 
uh, my final announcement is election is November 2nd. Um, please make sure you vote. Um, we are not here. We're not political, but I do hope that you uh, exercise your right to vote if you are um, eligible to um, and you register to. So um, November 2nd, please make sure you vote. Um, and with that, is there a motion to adjourn? Can someone unmute and say so move? So moved. There's a second. Can someone unmute and say second? Come on, y'all. Second that. All right. Without objections, have a great evening. We will see you next month. Okay. Bye, thank you so much. Good it's been a great good meeting. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you all, Eddie. Great to meet you, and uh, look forward to your uh, to your involvement in the council. All right, take care, everyone. Bye.